that do the thing where we don't just be starting off right and again because that's weird. Yeah, we gotta save you for a minute. We'll be like. <laughs> you know I'm putting this in the bloopers, right? Yeah. What's up, everybody? We are here for episode 12 of Motivation with Me. So, before I get to this person right here on my left, that's my left, right? It's totally my left. It's my left, but I think to them it's the right. Okay. Okay, it doesn't matter. Um, before I get to this wonderful person right here, who some of you may or may not know, let me first say that I've been gone for a while. I am sorry about that. So this is the first video of 2020. We're going to get back on track with the YouTube videos. We're going to continue motivation with me. I was gone, but I'm back now. Okay, so I'm going to get back to regular schedule programming. Back on she never left. Like I never left. See, yeah. she already knows. So we're in our single, save, and celibate series still. And Breaking Toxic Ties was something that I got on YouTube that people really wanted to talk about. Um, I actually had a young lady from New Zealand message me on Instagram because she read my blog, my single, save, and celibate series blog. And she was asking me questions on how I did it, how I was able to get through it, because she did it for a little bit, and then she broke it, and she was in a toxic relationship. So she needed to, she was trying to understand how did she break away from that toxic relationship in order to get on this journey, on this celibacy journey. Because I will be the first to tell you, you can't be on a celibacy journey or a celibate journey if you're in a toxic relationship. It's, it's just not gonna work like you literally have to start from the beginning so the single save and celibate series has been really popping and i got a big surprise coming for y'all that i cannot tell what it is yet but it's coming because my google numbers is on fleek <laughs> and they own it popping do i know the singles yeah you know you probably don't remember though but but let's just say something is coming okay for everybody that's all of i mean once i got a message from somebody in new zealand I was like, oh, yeah, we got to do something with this. So getting into it, let's get into it. This lovely person that I love so much is my big cousin, Ashley. <laughs> she is my everything. She's been knowing me since I was born, literally. She, she, was, really she was there yeah. when I was born. Um, and she, like, totally used to kiss on me uh, when I was a baby. And I don't think she knew what I was just yet. So she did. She did. It's like she didn't know what I was, but she just kept kissing me. And I don't know what she expected to happen at to a month. I know it totally was. So <laughs> anybody who knows us knows from one we're goofy. Mm -hmm. So be prepared. Um, we, we're a little crazy when it comes to each other. We're very protective. Um, mm -hmm. If something ever happens to me, then she's going to be the one I call and you should be very afraid. So in other words, don't fuck with me. Okay. So. <laughs> This is the unfiltered. Oh, damn. Yeah, we do unfiltered. We got, okay. Oh, yeah, she, she don't know. Y'all know how I get down, but she don't know. Okay. No, this is the unfiltered motivation okay. channel. Well, shit, then. So it's wild, real, and uncut. All right, then. Okay. So, okay. All so right. Get, all right. just get all the way real. Okay. Because my viewers know. Okay. All right. So today we're going to talk about breaking toxic ties. Okay. This is very important. And I brought Ashley here, and I wanted her to do this with me hmm. because she... <clears throat> got all the tea in the best game on this topic. Arizona tea. <laughs> okay. Arizona tea. Okay. Like the 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 sweet simply no, that's thankfully lemonade. I fuck, I fucked it up. Okay. So she got <laughs> she got all the tea on it. I do as well, but mine is y'all know six years old and whatever. Y'all don't heard me tell my story so many mm -hmm. times. <clears throat> so it's time to hear it from another perspective. So what is a toxic tie? What do we think a toxic tie is? Uh, <clears throat> I believe a toxic tie. Well, first, well, you got to think of what toxic is. Toxic is not healthy. Hazardous. Uh, it's something that causes harm. Um, but in this aspect, it causes sometimes physical harm, mm. emotional harm, mm. 
uh, it affects your mental stability. Uh, it infects toxic things infect things mm. and so a toxic relationship is something that does all of that it infects mm -hmm. it affects hmm. okay effects infects and even oh come on Amen. <laughs> it's just, the word be good sometimes hallelujah mm. um but it's just something that brings in a lot of negativity into your life and it's someone that you choose to communicate with on a regular basic so i think uh, b a regular basic basis basis basic <laughs> <laughs> blooper moment Woo! Bam! it's something that or someone that you deal with on a regular basis um and they're negatively affecting your life and sometimes you don't even see it yep and some people are there for two days and some people don't realize it until 20 years. 20 years. I was just about to say, it could be two days or 20 years. Like, it is <laughs> very, it's hard for the person in the relationship to see it when everybody else on the outside can see it. Because I know, especially with me personally, mm -hmm. my cousin always catches stuff that I don't see. Um, she's very protective. And I used to literally fight her. Because I thought she was crazy. And she's always has had, she's been motherly. She's very motherly yeah. with me. So she'll be like, no, that that person wasn't right. I'm like, you just don't want to let me live my life. Like, you don't know what you're talking about. We've not I'm talked love. behind it. Like, literally, we've uh -huh. not talked. Because I always thought she was trying to control me. And she was literally just telling me the truth. Yeah. And that's always how it is. Somebody on the <laughs> outside always sees it. And you don't. Because you're in love and you're so infatuated and you're so affected and infected under this person's influence or it gets to the point where you're numb to it. Like you're it's normal to you. Mm -hmm. It's your normal, mm -hmm. which goes, you know, even deeper into like domestic violence relationships. But when someone has a soul, a toxic soul tie on you or any type of soul tie, then it's harder for you to break away from that. That means they have you literally by the heart, like your heart is in their hands. And especially with men, they're like, okay, well, I can do whatever I want. Mm. I can say whatever I want, and she's just going to go with it. Or even vice versa, there are toxic women, too, where they will, you know, like we had a consultation with a guy where we wanted to get a guy's uh, opinion, mm -hmm. and mm. his was the, the opposite. He was putting all of his energy and time into this relationship, yeah. and he wasn't getting it in return over a course of seven years. Mm -hmm. So it happens to men as well. It's not like, oh, this is a woman thing. This is a man thing. This is a person thing. This is a human situation. Mm -hmm. So these things are what we call toxic ties. When it's not healthy for you on any aspect, run. Forrest, run. A lot of the times you have to run because, again, you're a part of it too. Yeah. Sometimes it's even worse when you have two toxic people mm -hmm. that are together. Because you have someone on, on the woman's side telling them to run, and you have yeah. someone on the male side telling them to run, and then they form this Bonnie and Clyde complex. Like, it's yeah. us against the world, mm -hmm. and nobody wants us to be together. I'm and good. it's not you against the world. It's literally... Y'all against each other. Y'all against each other. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> you guys think that y'all are feeding into each other when really you're just infecting each other yeah. so what do you think you've been in toxic relationships uh -huh. so what do you think has been your breaking point what has made you step back and say wow like um definitely for me i would say my breaking point is always mm -hmm. unknown First of all, it always, I never know when it's coming. Okay. And I always say women have what's called a fuck it point mm -hmm. where they get mm -hmm. to a point where they're so tired and drained mm -hmm. and it's just nothing left where they just be like, you know what? Fuck it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my high moment. Your light bulb finally fucking yeah. comes on. Yeah. Right? It's like, you know what? Mm -hmm. Fuck it. But for me, especially with Robert, uh, one of my old relationships from high school, my first love, the one where I attempted suicide and that was major for me like that was in that moment when I realized that I was willing to take my life away like end my life over a man 
I came out of that psychiatric hospital like, oh, hell no. Yeah. Like, I got to run. Anytime you feel like your life isn't valuable because of somebody else or what they did, where they have that much power over you to take your own self out, Mm -hmm. that's an issue. Like, that was it for me. Um, With my other two relationships, it was all the cheating, all the lying, all the back and forth, all the – it just becomes so – draining Mm -hmm. and then um you know like we said we consulted with the guy who said uh the the woman wasn't with him at his lowest point which is very important yeah me and Ashley have both experienced a lot of loss Mm -hmm. very strong loss we both you know y'all know about Mill same situation with Ashley we both lost people who are the closest to us so if you can't be around and be encouraging and strengthen me in mm. that situation where I am at my lowest point, mm. then this ain't going to work. Now that you say that. Come on, somebody. Come on. Yeah. So these are your viewers, mm-hmm. so they don't know me personally, but you know how close I was to my grandmother. Mm-hmm. Uh, my grandmother was my everything. Everything. Uh, I actually took off of work for like a month to come to Houston and be with her before her passing. Mm-hmm. Um, and mind you, everyone knew how close I was with her. And so during that time, I'm expecting my significant other, mm-hmm. I mean, come down to, to the funeral with me, send me flowers, door dash me some food, something. something. I'm getting flowers from all these other people. But not from my significant other. Mm. He was just like, I hope you feel better. And during that time, you have to think when you're with someone that's toxic, if you marry that person, Miranda, mm-hmm. um, you go to a certain part of your life where you guys experience a lot of lo- losses together. Yeah. Your father becomes sick. Your mother becomes sick. His father becomes sick. His mother becomes sick. Who do you want standing there on the side of you in the hospital holding your mother's hand while she's dying? Who do you want at the side, on your side? My husband. It, but it, and a boyfriend, significant other husband, especially in a marriage. Yes. Because when you get married, two become one. Yes. <laughs> one flesh, as the Bible says. One flesh. And you have to think that person that you're with can I experience my can I experience my toughest losses with you mm-hmm. and depend on you? Mm-hmm. And if you can't depend on that person to be there with you during your toughest losses at your lowest point. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem. We don't think about all that before we get into the relationship. It's like that uh sex game. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm celebrating now. <laughs> that is exactly what I'm celebrating now, cause I will not fall for that trap. <laughs> it wouldn't listen. Talk about how the soul ties hmm. has a lot to do with sex. Again, this is the single saved and celibate series. Y'all know I talk about sex. My last video was on masturbation. So yeah, see some supporters. She don't even watch my YouTube videos, y'all. Probably because she knows everything anyway. But yes, that was on masturbation. So it's like sex is a heavy part of a soul tie because it's like. Sex is like a connection. Like once you're you enter into someone, y'all are in each other. Mm-hmm. That's a con- that's a deep connection, and I don't think people realize how deep that connection is. Even if it's just one time, you have let this person enter you. Mm-hmm. So this person now has a piece of you. Mm-hmm. That is a connection. That is a tie. Okay. Mm-hmm. People don't they underestimate that. They underestimate the power of sex, yeah. and with blinded you become blinded to the mental things like you don't start to see things you start to justify situations you start to like they could be doing something that was it's called red flags that you can't see and somebody else can because you're now connected to this person and you're blinded like um what's that saying where it's like uh you uh the dick is good, you digmatize or something like that. Digmatize. Yeah, you know, like pussy whips. What do they call it when you like the sex is so good? Dick whip? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Whipped by the dick. <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. That's, yes, that's a thing though. Like, it's a cliche, it's a joke, but it's totally a thing. Like, this really happens. Like, because of sex, you're stuck in this relationship. And even not even this beyond that. Be beating you? 
but he giving yeah. you the day. Yeah. You're paying for shit, but he giving you the day. Yeah. He don't do anything for you, but he's what? Giving the day. <laughs> so that has that has a lot to do with that. That's why I said I'm so glad I'm celibate because that was a big reason why I stayed in a lot of the relationships I did is because I was promiscuous. Like, I was very sexually active. So if sex was good... I think I know a new term. What? You know how you have brain fog and you can't think right? Brain fog? You never had a brain fog? No. And it's like, I can't really think straight. Well, brain fog is a thing. And you can't really think straight. Okay. Dick fog. <laughs> Dick fog. That's a thing. Dick fog. <laughs> you can't think straight <laughs> because of the D. We literally are horrible when we get together. And this is terrible. But she's serious though. Even in all of our jokes, we say this all the time. Like we crack all the jokes. We are very childish. Always have been. We are the terrible too. We grew up together, like literally at the hip. And we joke a lot, but it's so like it's not meant to hurt people's feelings. It's like we're serious. That's just how we are. And she's dead serious right now. Like it might sound funny, but she's so serious because that is a thing. And it's a thing we need to recognize. See how goofy she is? I'm now you're going to help people hashtag that. Hashtag dick fox. <laughs> okay. Uh, what's your Instagram? So they can go ahead and tag you with that. Oh, home. it's all that ash. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> make sure you guys follow her on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Though she don't post on the Snapchat. But okay. Just tag her if you happen to use that hashtag. So what would you say was, because, okay, you're, you're not with this person anymore, right? Okay, what would you say was your breaking point when it came to this person? And even people from the past. See, I know your past. Um, And I've only really been in two serious relationships. You know both of them. Yep. Um, she's 27, 28? 28, almost 29. And uh, I believe the first one was so irrelevant and just young, young. Ugly. They had dick far out. It was young. He he is hideous. He was facially challenged. Let's be. But okay. okay. <laughs> so I think in my second relationship, um. Everyone who knows me knows my personality. I'm very bubbly. I'm very friendly. Mm -hmm. um, I I don't get angry very quickly. Um, I'm the calm one. The only time I'm not calm is when it comes to like her, my siblings, and my mother. Yeah. Um, yeah, it gets ugly. Yeah. Any other situation, I'm calm. Like I'm a Pisces. I'm emotional. I don't. I don't run towards any type of argument yeah I, that, that's just not me mm -hmm. and in my past relationship i mean it's funny because i just spoke with him you know he apologized for all the confusion that you know he caused in our relationship but he says i think i created a monster mm. and the reason for that is because he took me so much out of my character Mm. I'm friendly, I'm bubbly, I'm a lover, I'm not a fighter. And it got to the point where I was going home flipping tables over on this nigga. I was just thinking about that when I went to go see it. <laughs> like, I was going, I was, I was getting in my car on my lunch break, going home to specifically fuck some, some shit up. Like, and that's not me. Like, I'm not, you know, this angry girl. I've never been the neck if you book. I will if I have to. But that's never been my personality. Like, it's never been me. She's my opposite. She is literally my opposite. And <laughs> he turned me into that. Yeah. And when I saw that my relationship was causing me to be the total opposite of who I actually was, it was time for me to go. Yeah. Uh, he 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 made it so that I started to even look different. Like people don't understand when your emotions change so much. Like you start to look different, you start to feel different, you start to act different. All those are signs of an infection. Yep. The energy. 
<clears throat> people can feel the toxic energy coming from you. It's like I knew something was off with her. I could feel it. Like even when she came Denver. around, mm -hmm. she's in Denver. She could call me, and I'm like, "What's wrong? Nah, something ain't right." And she has the same instinct with me. It's like, and you just be like, "Nothing." Nah, mm -hmm. I could feel it. Mm -hmm. So I would come to Denver, visit them, and you can see the 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 toxic energy, the elephant in the room, the separation. It was like, what is this? I wasn't happy. She was not happy at all. And when she ain't happy, I ain't happy. No. So y'all know it took everything in me not to kill him, right? And <laughs> and uh, I I think that is what was my breaking point was. I became a totally different person, mm -hmm. and I didn't like who that person was. It even affected me professionally when I would go to work. I mean, how can it not affect me professionally when I was going home on lunch flipping mm -hmm. tables? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, that, that wasn't who I was, and he did not, he didn't feed into me at all, or, you know, any of that. And so mm -hmm. at that point, I knew it was time to go. Now, I think a lot of the times, people know when something is toxic. Yeah, they know. But the hard part is. You know, hard, that's the hard. If it was that easy, we wouldn't even be having this YouTube video. That's something else. Yeah. My friend said. Yes. We our our guy consultant. Our guy consultant. <laughs> we're just, uh, just going to call him. We'll Dom. give him. I'll give him his, his initials. I said Dom. Oh, Dom. Dom. That could be anybody. Dom. Dom. Uh, <laughs> uh, he just said he got comfortable. Yeah. He got comfortable. He got complacent. And mm -hmm. especially when you get in a certain age, I think it becomes easier for you to remain complacent in toxicity the older that you become because you just start to be like, I'm already too old, you know, yeah. like, I'm old, I ain't gonna find nobody else. I put too much into this. Yeah, you, you invested too much time in it, which is another thing that probably, a lot of people don't want to be alone. A lot of people do not want to be alone, okay? That was me. That used to be me. I could not not be in a relationship. It was I, mean, I could not like to be alone. And, yeah, she still, she still is very relationship oriented. I call it relationship oriented. My best friend is like that too. Um... Some people are just relationship oriented, where they prefer relationships over being by themselves. I used to be like that too, but when you by yourself for six years, you start to learn a lot of shit. But before that, she used to a hip, a hop, a a hip, 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 hop. to the hip, hip, hop, and don't stop the rocket to the bang, bang, boogie it up, to, boogie it up, boogie it up, like so much. We are terrible. Like I used to go from one to two to three. Like I wouldn't even take a break in between. So six years was like a detox for me. And I had to take away sex to do that. Because it was like I don't want nothing. Like I don't want a relationship. I don't want sex. I don't want a date. I don't want no man. I don't want to do none of that. I just want to be single. And did I want to? It is like a, it's like a cleanse. It's like, did I want to? No. In the beginning, I didn't want to. That shit was hard. You can find me. It was hard. Like, I'd be like, Ashley, I ain't gonna never find no man. Like, bro, like, I don't want to be selling no more, selling no more. Nobody's gonna ever accept my celibacy. I'm gonna be by myself forever. Like, it got to the point where I really started to believe I was gonna be alone forever. But being by myself in those six years taught me a lot about myself. I learned, I grew. I, my self love became strong. Like I built so many businesses, organizations. Like I built this platform. So being by yourself is sometimes what you need mm -hmm. because you have to heal. You got to take time to heal, focus, figure out what you want. Like you can't love nobody correctly until you love yourself first. Yeah, wow. you can't. Can you, you can't love anybody correctly until you love yourself first. <laughs> love yourself first. Mm. And if you can't do that right, everything else after that ain't going to work. Nope. So that's what you have to realize. People don't want to be by themselves. So that's why it's hard for them to leave because if they leave, they're like, I'm going to be by myself. And, you know, I hate to call out, you know, I love her so much. But my mama was like that. My mama was like that. And she it's like I would rather go through the pain of being in a relationship than the pain of being by myself. Yeah. And a lot of people have that mentality mm -hmm. because we believe that it's going to hurt worse mm -hmm. if we break up than it does while we're in it. 
Mm-hmm. Because I remember when she was with the first, the ugly dude, and they broke up. You had to add, add in there. Oh, he's ugly. So they broke up, and I still remember this. So. Hashtag facially challenged. She nice. That nigga was ugly. Um, They <laughs> broke up, and she was miserable, as she should have been. That was her first love. That was her first everything. Like, I'm telling y'all, we tried for years to get her away from this man, and we couldn't do it. My mama. But she was young. Like, how old were y'all? Like, you was like, what, 17, 18? And y'all was talking... Y'all had knew they grew up in the same church, so they been knew each other, families knew each other, all that. But when they find, I mean, he put her through the ringer. But when they finally broke up, and she she was in so much pain, and I remember telling her, Ashley, this pain isn't gonna last forever. You just gotta get through it. It's not. It's it's you're not. It's not gonna forever hurt. No. And she could for the life of her could not see it. She you get into the point where you don't think it's gonna end. I'm like Ashley, I'm telling you. Like six months from now, we gonna laugh at this yeah. conversation. Yeah, I was gonna like, give it time. That pain is gonna pass. Yes, but in her mind, she was so hurt, she never thought it would end. And people don't want to take that time. It's yeah. like a drug. It's so it's like some, a drug. for some reason something that's toxic is so addicting. Cause it's toxic. It's toxic. Like it's <laughs> a literal. It's like drug. Like, yeah, and it's people like, don't yeah. want to take that time to go through those withdrawals. When mm-hmm. you stop smoking or when you get off a specific drug, like you get nausea, your head hurts, you start sweating, you start shaking, but you don't go back and say, oh, okay, I'm just going to stick it in there. Yeah. Because, because you, you don't want to deal with it. You don't want to deal with it. And people don't want to go through that and that's my biggest thing is I want to tell people who are in toxic relationships and they don't want to give up is give yourself that time yeah give yourself that time it's okay during that time to not be around your friends as much because you're going through something I mean people who are going through withdrawals don't be in carols like hey especially if they're going through alcoholic withdrawals that ain't right that's that's what set up. See, I'm like that. I shut myself out. Like, I look, cause sometimes you gotta tell people, look, sis, I'm going through something and I need time. And it's hard for me, cause and she gets on me about this all the time. I'm a motivator and I be trying to save everybody. So if I say I'm going through something and then my best friend hit me up and she going through something. I don't have enough discipline to tell me I can't help you because I'm going through something. I put my situation on the back burner and try to help her and figure out what we're going to do. I do that all the time. She hates it. That's my issue. It's annoying. Yeah, I need to learn how to. I'm getting better, all right? But it's like, just leave me alone. (laughs) <laughs> like, I really be thinking in my head, leave me alone, let me be. So I get to cut my phone on, do not disturb, and just go to sleep. But... That's the like tell people look I'm I'm going through something you ain't gotta go into details just tell them you need time yeah because if you that pressure people start asking questions like well what's going on well what what happened why this and why that that's just gonna make it worse yeah. like you don't want to sit there and have the same conversation over and over or talk about it over and over because you're just replaying the situation in your head yeah. so you gotta take time to yourself and go through the motions like go through the stages you got to be sad then you got to be mad then you it's like seven what is the seven stages of grief or something like that it's you got to go through those stages naturally don't try to maneuver through it don't try to rush through it don't try to talk yourself out of it like how she would do (laughs) like call me like no no i just i can't do this i can't no yeah you can just give it some time it's it's gonna come and the time came and what i said was right now, what she did after that, that's on her, not on me. That's... You're being messy. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about that. So, so, another thing is, is when you're going through something that's toxic, is you got to cut yourself off from it altogether. Mm. Um, stop trying to tempt yourself. Or, I mean, a crack addict doesn't say... Well, you know, I'm just going to go around the crack house and see if I can, you know, I'm going to see if I don't, if, if I don't. Do you sniff crack? You and Jake crack? What do you do with crack? Uh, I think you, <laughs> you No, you stick it in. <laughs> I'm trying to think about the wire. 
No, no, no. The crack cocaine is what you sniff. Cocaine is the lines, but crack, okay. crack is a rock. What are you doing it? You smoke it. Oh, you smoke it. Okay. Okay. Now you think I have what to do with crack? Crack. Listen, I don't know. Crack. I don't know how to smoke weed. <laughs> I can't say I smoke no crack since I eat. Crackheads don't go around or recovering crackhead. Is that a politically correct term? A crackhead? A recovering crack addict. Crackhead. It's a crackhead. Uh, they don't go around crack houses and test themselves to see if they don't smoke the crack. You know? Mm. If you're trying to remove yourself from a toxic situation, Remove them from social media. Remove yourself from their family. Okay, it's over. Let it go. Okay, stop trying to be their friend. I'm just gonna be your friend. No. I'm just gonna be around the crack and not smoke it. No. You have to remove yourself completely. Completely. Block that nigga. Like <laughs> I'm telling you, don't try to do it because it's going to hurt. Like you cannot. Be in a relationship and still afterwards be connected or try to be friends. You got to give it time. You got to give yourself time to heal. For example, one of my closest male friends is my ex-boyfriend, Bobby. Okay? He did me dirty. And he know he did me dirty. For those who read the book, it was it was Clark. Clark is Bobby and Bobby is Clark. And I can say that because he does not care. <laughs> He did me all the way dirty. But I will tell you what, nine years later, we are like best friends. But get what I just said. Nine years later, it took us a long time to get to where we are. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you can never be friends with any of your exes. Like, I'm friends with all, I don't have no animosity towards any of my exes. But don't try to do it immediately. Because you have to heal. Like, you, me and Bobby had to completely remove ourselves from each other's lives. Completely. Like, no contact, no nothing, no social media, no I'm talking to your friends, you talking to my friends. Like, completely forget about each other in order to become the friends that we are today. And that's where we mess up. We still want to go on social media and look at stories. We still want to, like, oh, well, let me just text and see. Or, or, like, say, for instance, I'm talking to Ashley's ex. Like, we're still friends. Uh, she'll come to me and be like, oh, you talk to him? Like, what are you doing? What are you up to? Or if I still follow him on social media, no. what's, what's on his story? No. Like, don't do, don't that. do that. Don't let them people talk to your parents, your no. mama. Like, no. none of that. It's over. It, that's it. <laughs> like, that's the only way to truly heal. Because if you would get even just a little bit, then you ain't going to never get past those withdrawals. You're never going to really truly heal from that toxicity if you steady trying to keep some type of connection. Yeah. It don't work like that. Nope. It don't work like that. You got to. You got to. You got to cut it. You got to cut it. You got it to ain't nothing to cut that. So. That's all I'm saying. I'm coming, huh? I was going to say, I'm coming, huh? I was going to say, But I think me and you have both help each other yeah. work through uh, our toxic relationships. My advice is, it's going to sound real stupid. But find your toxic buddy. Find somebody who you find somebody who you can call when you know, and someone who doesn't judge you. Someone who you can call and say, "I miss him," because it's okay to miss that toxic thing. Yep, it's okay to if you're a recovering crack addict to say, "I'm going through it today. Like I'm about to, I'm about to go through my breaking point. I feel like I'm about to, I feel like I'm about to break." That's okay. Yeah. The thing is, is do you break or do you not? Yeah, because if you don't miss them, then it was never real in the first place. It wasn't. Like, what? <laughs> like, if you don't, if you, if you don't miss somebody, if it don't hurt, it wasn't real. Mm -hmm. Like, it's going to hurt. If it does not hurt, it wasn't real in the first place. Mm -hmm. So it's okay to call. Like my, I have a list. Let me tell you something. Okay, I call the same people every time. I call her. She don't answer. I'm gonna call Christian. Christian don't answer. I'm gonna call Nikki. Them my three people. If neither of them people answer, then I'm going to just have to talk to myself. Yeah. But I have people that are specifically there for that reason because these people won't judge me. They're going to give me what I need to hear, especially this one right here. She's going to give it to me just raw, just real and uncut. Okay. And then she... It's just a table last week. <laughs> a whole table at a restaurant fussing at me and had everybody looking at us like we was crazy. 
Like, really? This one? It's, she don't look. It depends on what. If I'm crying, then she'll be a little nice about it. But afterwards, she's going to be like, look. Lou is in Rice Village. Let me tell you something. <laughs> like, get your shit together. <laughs> she is very like that person that you call when it's like you really need to get your shit together. And then I got one that I call where I just vent and they don't say nothing. And then the other one is just like real motherly and like it's gonna be okay. But those are my people. Find your person or your people or your tribe or something that you can go to, judgment free, and be like, hey, look, I miss such and such. Like, this is hard. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it because I've done it with her. Like, I'm going to be single forever. Okay, Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse, tell us what time it is. Um, I'm going to be celibate forever. I'm never going to find nobody. And she had to get me out of that mindset. Mm -hmm. She was like, stop telling yourself that. Mm -hmm. Like, that is not true. You're going to find somebody. Pray about it. Mm -hmm. Talk to God. Mm -hmm. You're going to get there. Yeah. Like, you just, it does, you don't know how long it's going to take. None of that. But I had to call her, and she snapped me back, and I was like, all right, bitch, I'm good now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's going to help you. You're a toxic, buddy. Like It's kind of like having a sponsor. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like you do this to something, and you have a sponsor, mm -hmm. and you call your sponsor, it's mm -hmm. the same thing. Like, this sponsor doesn't say, ugh, crack. Yeah, like. How could you like crack? Yeah, and <laughs> nine times out of ten, your sponsor's been where you are. Because yeah. that's another thing. You want somebody who's been there. Yes. Because it's like if they haven't been there, they don't really understand. Either they've been there or they were there when you went through it. Mm -hmm. Like it's easy for me to call Ashley because Ashley has been there through every single thing I went through. Like everything. She's been there every step of the way. Mm -hmm. So she understands because she had to watch it firsthand. So she knows all of my past. Like how it's like you go to a new therapist, how you gotta catch them up. Okay, I was molested this age and this died and this happened mm -hmm. and this I was raped and this. But with her, she already knows. So I don't got to back explain nothing. I just got to tell her what it is, and then we can go from there. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. It's like having a sponsor when you addicted to something. Like, find your toxic buddy. Your toxic buddy. I like that. Your toxic buddy. You coming up with all the jokes. Today. Hashtag toxic, toxic buddy. buddy. Oh, wow, we're going to totally rule the hashtag world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, we've given... I think a lot of advice, a lot of um, signs, a lot of a definition of what toxicity is, common breaking points, advice on how to get out, how to recover, how to heal. Um, I think we've touched on a lot of that. And I hope, I really do hope and pray that somebody who needs to hear this, hear this hears this or everybody who needs to hear this, hear this. Because like I said, I've been getting a lot of messages on this. Every person I talk to about being celibate is is always like I need to break a toxic tie or they're in a relation uh, a toxic relationship or something. And my advice to you is you cannot walk the celibate journey in a toxic relationship. It's not. And if you look at my blog, I talk about celibacy within relationships, celibacy before and after relationships. I talk about celibacy until marriage. I talk about relationships, masturbation. Like there's so many different aspects of celibacy. And you have to be careful how you maneuver. I remember one person asked me, like, they were already in a relationship. Mm -hmm. So they had already had sex, mm -hmm. but they wanted to become celibate. Okay. That's tough. That's tough. That's a whole nother, I got, that's a whole nother advice route. So. Are you going to do another video on that? What? I think you should do a video on that. On what? Celibacy in relationships? How do you go from being sexually intimate to not? To not. I do need to do a video. You should do a video. I that. haven't done it. I did the blog, but I didn't do the video. Okay. Episode 13? It's a cookie. I think episode 13. Oh, episode 13 it is. Mm. Unfortunately, Ashley will be back in Denver, guys. Boo. So she won't be here. And I think she's, I'm really sad because she's a really good video buddy. <laughs> but she'll be in Denver. But I'll be in Denver. And we'll have the juice. We'll have the juice. I will bring my camera and my laptop and my editing stuff and we will do a video just for y'all when I come to Denver and I go very often so I think I pretty much live there. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much, I pretty much her apartment is like my second home at this point. Like Denver is literally like up the street for me now. Yeah. Um hop on a flight real quick. So well now we got our next video topic for episode thirteen. Mm -hmm. It's going to be celibacy within relationships to go Ooh. along with the blog. Um, and believe it or not, fun fact, y'all, while Ashley is on here, let me end it with this. Y'all know my first book, Troubled? Hmm. Will you believe 
that she's the one who came up with that title? Yes. Yes. I've given you credit before, but not with you actually sitting here. So the original title was The Life of a Troubled Teen. And I call her, I call this fool. And I told her, I was like, yes, yeah, The Life of a Troubled Teen. She was like, nah, nah, bro. That ain't it. Nah. This is what it should be. Hold on. My drop. One word, bro. One word. Struggle. Period. That's it. That's it. That's all you need. I was like, yes. So she was the one who came up with that title. And because of her, the book was named Trouble. Then came the Trouble Movement. Then came everything after that. Got to give my credit where credit is due. So you should, yes. yes. That was you. That was you. That was you. That was her. She did not do it. And she does it all the time. Like, literally. She's like, oh, you should do that, bro. Like, we'll be talking about something. And she'll say, like, she just did. Y'all just sit here and watch her do it. So she's very motivating. And I'm trying to get her to start her blog. Can we push her to start her blog, please? At least I have the name for it. She has a name for it. What's your name? Do you even remember your name for it? I do. What is it? The Plus Side. Of plus size. Okay, how was the second? She made me come up with that <laughs> in was, 10 seconds. She gave me a countdown. She was like, my ninja. <laughs> yeah. I like that. So we're definitely going to get that on the property in 2020. She just found out I'm secretly on. Okay. So, thank you, Ashley, for joining me today. You're welcome. I love you so much, cousin. I love you. I love you. <laughs> We're so childish. <laughs> but thank y'all for tuning in to Motivation with me, and we will see you next time for episode 13, Celibacy in Relationship. See y'all in Denver. Bye. Bye.